what's going on everybody thank you so much for tuning in i know you guys waited a little bit longer for this one and i thank you for doing that so we have someone to bring on board okay and- guys it's time for a drew deeks update and in this episode we're going to talk about everything montreal canadians related all right now that's how you freaking cut a guy off and do a proper introduction ladies and gentlemen hockey junkie matt thank you hey. for cutting me off like the brilliant genius that you are always a pleasure drew it's always a pleasure to be cutting people <laughs> off even in traffic <laughs> We're better of a place to do it. Let's be honest. Um, True. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for jumping on again, brother. We we had a great chat before uh, jumping on to record here just to catch up. And, uh, you know, we, we've we've kind of connected, man, uh, outside of the YouTube realm of the Montreal Canadiens and doing our channel, channels and stuff like that. And it's been nice to, uh, to get to know each other, man. So um, in terms of what we're going to talk about, Habs related today, guys. Um, you know, big surprise. We're going to talk about the Tampa game last night and the big story out of Montreal. This is going to be one of the last few times we're ever going to hear this guy's name in Montreal, potentially. But Martin St. Louis benching Jonathan Drouin, which if you didn't catch it, check out Matt's video from today on his channel about Johnny Drouin. Uh, we're going to do a little Habs Tankathon update and then right into tanking versus culture, which was a question that came in through Twitter. And Dennis Gurionov, Matt, like, I mean, this guy has been, um, you know, I wouldn't say he's been a surprise. I said the day that we got him for Big Daddy Nov. That's my impression of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said the day we got him that he was a steal. So I think he is personally. But um, why don't we start with Johnny Drew, man? Because we all kind of know this was, you know, the talk of the town. Unfortunately, it's just Jonathan Drew. And so, you know, <laughs> like, it, cool. it's a story, right? No matter what happens with this guy from the time, even before you arrived in Montreal, he's been a story. He's still a story. Um, but <laughs> what do you think, man? Oh, man, it's hard to even talk about him because, like, I find with Johnny Drew and there's like, there's, there's like 40% of the people, they hate him. And then there's 40% of the people that they love him. And then you got 20% of the people that are just kind of sitting on the fence, you know, and that's more like where I am right now. I mean, the guy was late. I mean, if I'm late for work, I'll get my PP slap. So <laughs> I guess Marty St. Louis feels the same way and he made him pay for it. I, it sucks. It's his contract year, but uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Like I, I was talking to Mitch Gallo yesterday on TS from TSN 690 about it because he just always feels like Drouin is the whipping boy. And I think that's been fairly true to an extent. He does yeah. always seem to kind of get the spotlight and then the short end of the stick. And then you got the French media that seemed to really have um, had a decent relationship with him. And he's a Francophone. He speaks their language. They appreciate the sound bites. He gives them all that stuff and just the relationship because of the bond with the language. Right. Yeah. So to me, I think it's definitely a bit of a split, but I kind of liked it. I thought it was a bit of a boss move from Marty because, I mean, you got your coach, Martin St. Louis, the night before getting inducted into the Tampa Bay Hall of Fame. The first players to go in are Marty St. Louis and Vinny the Cavalier. Cavalier, Big surprise. Well-deserved. Stanley Cup winners. All the accolades, all the numbers, right? And then you got a guy like Jonathan Drouin only a couple of minutes late. And the thing is, Matt, he said that he, he missed hearing his alarm clock. That is the oldest excuse in the book. I know because I'm the king of being late. I'm trying to break that habit. Okay. <laughs> I really am, but like I ain't buying it. And I'm not, I know it was a bit of a, you know, he, they made him an example. And honestly, if Caden Gooley wasn't hurt, more than likely he just would have been a healthy scratch, right? Yeah, he would have been. I, I seem to think so too. Uh, like you said, man, it's, the oldest excuse in the book, and I'm, I'm the same as you. I'm the lord of excuses. Like I make, them, I don't, I don't go a day without making excuses for something. But I mean, hey, like the guy gets paid a lot of money, and and that's the difference. Like I, I remember being late for work when I first started working, and I was getting like six bucks an hour, and and, and I got in <laughs> shit. But I mean, like this guy is making millions, man, millions. So yeah. it's it's kind of it's kind of a tough situation for him. But you know what's really funny though, when I think about it, like. So we're all assuming that Jonathan Drouin is not going to be a Montreal Canadian next season. I mean, look at him. He's, he knows he's on his way out. It's on his face. It's written all over him. <laughs> but uh, can you imagine the heat that's going to be on Mike Hoffman of Yoel Armia, man? Come on down. They're the new whipping boys. 
I, I even went and bought a new whip for them. They're they're primed and ready. <laughs> yeah, well, they've already taken some of it, but it does seem like you know Jonathan jordan has been at the forefront. He's been, you know, what is it the uh, the old Jake Gardner on the Leafs? Like nobody got it worse than that guy when he was a Toronto yeah. Maple Leaf man, and and Duran has been uh, no exception. And you know what the thing is, like we we went on Habs tonight. We did an entire show with Dale Weiss about about Jonathan Duran when he actually left and took his personal leave of absence. And then when he came back, there was a lot of hope again. Like he looked healthy. He looked good. He came out about his insomnia and his anxiety. And like, man, I think we've done as a fan base, every bit of support. So to clear, to make another point, I went to the home opener, not this. Well, I went to the last two home openers now, which has been a blessing, but it was the home opener where Jonathan drew in. It was his first, game back at the bell center after coming back from those issues. Right. Yeah. And he scored and the building erupted. And even before the game, his introduction, the fans erupted. Um, He's had some good nights at the bell center. He, he's shown flashes of how great he can be, how talented he is. So in terms of from the fan side of things, we've given this guy and there's been a mixed bag of emotions and reactions to the guy, but we've given him a lot of love too, man. I got to say to be like, that's my feeling on it. There's there's nobody that wants to see Johnny Drouin succeed more than Montreal Canadiens fans. Like everybody's been rooting for him for the past few seasons. I know I have. Like I've always wanted to see him do good, but it's just like like you said, every time it seems like he's gonna start picking up and, and things are going in the right direction. There's always setbacks, man, whether it's uh injuries or just uh eating a yeah. bag of Doritos and being out long term after eating them. Like it's it's always something from one thing to the next. Yep. It does seem that way. It just seems like there's always he's just been a very, very polarizing figure in Montreal because he's a Francophone. That's just how it goes. He's a hometown guy. And this isn't the first time it's happened. I mean it does happen with their French players. Uh maybe not to this degree because of the trade that was made for Sergachev and now we see what Sergachev's become. Um, you know has two oh. little two little rings on his finger now. Yeah, um, it stings. <laughs> still stings a little bit. It's Bergevin's worst trade still by a long shot. But um, you know what? I just hope that in some regard do you think there's any do you think there's any chance? Is there any chance whatsoever that Duran comes out of this? I mean, learning his lesson or whatever, but like, is there any chance that he's a Montreal Canadian next year whatsoever in your mind? I don't think there's a chance at all. And uh, the guy that I do the podcast with, uh, Gary, shout out to him. He's watching right now. He's definitely my number one fan. Uh, Gary. (laughs) He wrote me like, well, he always said there was a 0% chance, but he wrote me tonight and he said he he now got it moved down to like minus 5% chance that Johnny Drew has back. No, I I just don't see it happen. Not realistically. Yeah, I just. I think so too. I think it definitely is time to move on. I mean, like the, the guy's agent's Alan Walsh. Like we're not getting a discount here, guys. Like it's not happening. <laughs> like, no, and it's probably you know, best for both parties too. Yeah, like if you know anything about Alan Walsh as an agent, uh, he fights hard for his clients. So I, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I think it's time to move on. Like you said, it's it's too bad that like it didn't end on a higher note for him. But we tried, man. We tried to give that guy all the support we could, in my opinion. So. Anyway, uh, that being said, I think I would like to go into a subject that I didn't actually uh, <laughs> put into the titles when we opened the show, but I want to talk about Rhett Pitlick's crazy goal. Um, I was hoping I spelled his, rim, his name right. I think I did. You did. You got it. All right. Beautiful. So fifth round pick, Matt, in the 2019 NHL entry draft for the Habs. How many Pitlicks do we have? I don't know. It's the Montreal Canadiens and the Pitlicks. I feel like, you know, this has been like a, it's like a carnival, right? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> Gotta catch him all, man. You're like the Pitlick man. And, and Kent Hughes is like, can't catch him. He's just, <laughs> he's just swooping them all in. He lost Tyler, but I mean, Rick's still going strong now in the NCAA, man. That, that highlight from last night was, it was insane. I couldn't believe it when I seen it. And, and you even said, like, you had to do a double take. You were looking at the back of his jersey, like, hey, is that, is that Pitlick? Who is that? I, I thought that was Lane Hudson. <laughs> yeah, like, that's crazy, man. What a goal he pulled off. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's let's show it because uh, it was it was so awesome. And uh, you know what? For our viewers here, look at this crazy goal. Like uh, that kid's ankles are both broken. There's no chance oh that he survived. God. His have, ankles are done. So, I haven't uh, moved like that since I had to use the bathroom, and there was a bunch of people online, <laughs> like just dangling, just dangling. 
Oh my gosh, is that ever true, isn't it? Oh man. So like th- this is lightning in a bottle here, maybe, but uh left winger Rhett Pitlick is 22 years old, playing at the University of Minnesota, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points in 36 games right now in the Big Ten in Minnesota, which is of course uh university or college, actually. Is it college? I want to yeah. say it's college. Okay. Yeah. But uh, what do you make of this, you know, this highlight here? Is this just like a flash in the pan? Like, uh, what, what do we make of this highlight here from him? Oh, man, you know what? Like, uh, I hate to come right out and say it, but uh, like, I wouldn't get my hopes like too high. Like, you know what I mean? Like Santa Claus is real kind of high. Because <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, he's, he's doing pretty good. His numbers are pretty similar to last season when you look at him and, and uh He's what, 21, 22 years old now, I think? Yeah, 20, uh, he just turned 22, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I'd be kind of surprised. I mean, he could. I mean, all these guys got potential. I mean, that's why they're there. But uh, I, I just, I wouldn't put any money on him making the show. But it's nice to have him in the system still. I mean, he's a pit lick. And, I mean, these guys are like wieners. You can't have enough of them on the barbecue. Everybody loves them. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Especially he has management. So, uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? Maybe he surprises us. Yeah, he could surprise. Who knows, right? I mean, that was that was just a fun highlight. I think I want to watch it just one more time, uh, yeah. just for good measure, because I don't know. Why not? Um, maybe we can get a bit of a different angle. I think it'll be the same one here. But, uh, yeah, right from the blue line in. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Just gorgeous stuff. Unbelievable. Just gorgeous stuff. Shout out to uh, Hockey Psychology. Actually, that was where that clip came from. So um, let's go right into the Habs Tankathon update because I do believe that this is something that Montreal Canadiens fans are more interested in than anything else right now, Matt, is the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. We know how big of a draft this is for the Montreal Canadiens and the future of this franchise. So, I mean, we've talked about it. You've talked about it. The draft lottery odds where they sit right now. Montreal is currently in 28th spot where I said in a video the other day, I don't think they're going to finish much worse than 28th, but what do you think about where they're going to finish? It's, it's going to be close, man. Like there's going to have to be, you know, a lot of weird stuff going on for the Canadians to fall much further down. I mean, realistically, like I'd like to see them slide down to be the third last team in the league. But I mean, all those teams just suck, man. (laughs) <laughs> it's it sucks because uh i mean who wouldn't want connor bedard i mean you look at his highlights the guy's unbelievable and uh same with adam fantili he looks great too i, I think he got yep. kind of lift in the shadows at the world juniors you know what i mean like he wasn't at center stage or anything but i mean that guy went on and just put up amazing numbers amazing numbers so he, he's going to be a beauty too and he's big and, and uh, the top five really are all looking pretty good so I'm really optimistic about this draft. I, I hope that somehow, some way, the Habs do win like the a lottery pick and uh, move up further. Either that or they just naturally fall down more. Yeah, um, I just I, they could because um, you know let's look at the standing. Let, let's look at the current standings. That was the uh, draft lottery simulator, but let's actually take a look at the standings here specifically. Um, so if we scroll down a tiny bit here, so so Philly just passed us, so they're two points above the Habs. Anaheim is actually only four points behind the Canadians. And I know it's realistic. It is realistic. And then you got Chicago is six points back. So I think that's maybe a little tougher, but uh, San Jose 52. So the furthest down, I mean, I, I don't think Columbus, I don't think we're going to fall far as far as Columbus right now. No. They got 49 points, but San Jose 52, Montreal 60 with 12 games left. The Canadians have 12 games left. Um, What's your prediction though? Do you do you have a number in mind? I know I know you where you want them to finish, but where do you think they will finish? I think they're going to finish right where they're at right now. Twenty eight. That's yeah. That's that's where I think they're going to stay. I don't know why because well, when you look at the teams that are ahead of them too, like the Flyers and and well, the Canucks are around there somewhere and and yeah, Coyotes and Canucks have sixty five each. Yeah, these teams are still like you know they're not they're not going on any massive runs anytime soon, so. It's a coin toss now, man. It is. It's a coin toss. But, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm just hoping that one of these bottom teams, like maybe Anaheim just goes on a run somehow and um, and moves ahead of them. That'd be, that'd be just awesome. We just need Zegers to score like f- 
10 Michigans a game. It's not a, not a lot to ask. Yeah, he's better so, at blindfolded. Maybe he should blindfold him and put him out there. <laughs> he would be better blindfolded. Yeah. Oh, man. 100%. Well, let's jump right into tanking versus culture. So this this came in uh, a question from a viewer on Twitter. Um, and actually, I'm going to credit his name because it was his question. But um, what, what do you make of the difference between how that – because to me, the Habs culture is not nearly as bad as it was last year before Bergevin left and Trevor Timmons, et cetera, et cetera, before the Habs basically just cleaned house and then hired Jeff Gorton, Kent Hughes, and all the staff, Marty St. Louis. You know, like what, what do you make of tanking versus culture? That's, that's the question. You know, at this point in the game, like <laughs> – I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot right now. I mean, if the Habs went out and lost their next 12 games and then next season they insert Connor Bedard somehow into the lineup and, and you know, the team turns around and they go on and they have a wicked team for years, do you really think that five years down the road they're going to be sitting back and thinking, geez, boys, remember five years ago when we lost those 12 games in a row in the season? Like, God, we, we sucked back then, man. Like, no, they're going to be looking at the future. Uh, there's too much at stake here. Like, I honestly don't see it. And I mean, most of the players that are in the lineup right now, anyway, are Laval players and, and players that are probably not going to be around in, uh, you know, five, 10 years. So, in yeah. my opinion, I think they should just, you know, what well, they're going to do it anyway. They're just wherever they land, they're going to land kind of thing. But uh, I don't buy into the whole culture thing. Not Not two years into this. Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, despite the way things have gone, the Habs still haven't quit in games. They haven't quit on playing for Marty. We have basically half of the Laval Rocket on the team right now, so it's <laughs> to be, it's to be expected, right? I mean, this is like this almost seems like part of the plan without desiring guys to get hurt, not wanting that on any player. But Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon, they knew that this is where they wanted to be at the end of this season. No? Oh yeah, I think so. I mean everybody's been looking at Bedard and, and Beachkov and those guys for years now. So they're definitely, they knew what was coming. They, they seen the, they had a big uh, powwow about this before they took those positions and, and they knew what was ahead. That's, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, now that question came from Cedric Charette, uh, tanking versus culture. We already talked about Drew in, so we're not going to do that anymore. But um, yeah, I, I think that the way, they've handled losing this season. You can kind of feel the patience from Habs fans for the first time in my mind. Like, I think we all know where they're at. We do. We've talked about it all throughout the season. We've had, they were in a playoff spot in November. And you couldn't even say that last year. Last year, the second or third week of October, I'm like, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's honestly how I felt, man. Yeah, that's, that's the way it was for sure. I'm just hoping, you know, like, Maybe they sacrificed this season. They sacrificed last season. I don't know, man. Like the next, within the next couple of seasons, they got to start making a push again for the playoffs and and give the fans something to hope for. But this, these last twelve games, they're big. <laughs> they're big for the future of the team for sure. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that they end up with a really high pick this season, man. I just oh, Connor Bedard. God, I can't stop thinking about him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, don't tell your wife. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> but you know what? Like, I I said the tweet just kind of had a hunch that we might get Fantilli. I would love for, to get Fantilli. I I'd be I'd be stoked if we got one of the two guys. And I think you know a lot of people are talking about Carlson as well. Um, I don't know if you've had to, I I haven't had a chance to dig in too much on Carlson. I think it's William Carlson. Am I wrong? Um, uh, he's in the uh, top five projected to go. That's basically what I've been hearing. So. But uh, either way, I, I just don't know who they're going to end up with. But I, he, if, even if it's a guy that we don't know enough about right now, but be, they do their scouting, you know, like they, it just seems like the Canadians definitely have their crap together a lot more than than before, right? They got the analytics department, and the scouting department. They brought in, um, they just signed. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the defensive. Jaden Struble, thank you. Uh, they just signed Jaden Struble, but they waited, Matt. They waited for the right time. So, do you feel like? There's a much better handle now on who they're going to bring into this organization, making sure it's the right timing also. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking of Struble, like, I'm really excited about him now, too. Like, not 
just to see him play in Lavelle and see what kind of a player he is, it's, it's kind of hard to get a gauge on these guys when they're playing in the NCAA. I mean, I know I don't get to see too many highly packages of them. I mean, I'll get on their uh, team websites and have a look sometimes, but uh, watching them in Lavelle is much easier, eh? And you, and you get to see how good he is. And, and I think they're doing an excellent job, man. I'm hoping that Sean Farrell is going to sign really soon. Wells kid. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I could just see yeah. Will Farrell. Yeah, sorry. Took me a well, second. Took me a second. <laughs> no, but uh these guys are looking pretty good, man. What Wells kid's looking really good, I gotta say. He he put up a lot of points this season. <laughs> I think that should be our next one. So even though again, um Matt and I'd like to jump all over the place, but Sean Farrell, so um, will he be next? Uh, will, will, do you think the Canadians are going to sign him next? Uh there was a viewer, Alan. Belso, I believe, said that his last game was yesterday or could have been yesterday. And we may see him sign before the end of the season. What do you think? Does he get in bef- before the last 12 games are up? Alan's a beauty, by the way. I got to say that. And uh, <laughs> he is. Yeah, I, I think they're going to sign him. I think they're going to sign him right away. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious on whether or not they're going to stick him in Laval or if he's actually going to get a crack with the Canadians for a few games to end the season. I, I think that would be awesome for the fans. Kind of like when Jordan Harris came up and Cole Caulfield, all of a sudden you stick a guy like Farrell into the lineup and uh, it gives the fans something to, to watch, more, keep them more engaged into the games because, man, I don't know about you right now, but these games are getting tough to watch. Some days I'd rather stick my head in the toilet bowl. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I was actually talking to some people about that recently too. Like, It is tough. Like the Florida game the other night, I mean, that was a barn burn. It was 11 goals in first period alone. It was like close to a record breaking. Like I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So you're right, man. It's uh, it's tough to watch these games. So I'm hoping that there is more reason for, and I, I just, it'd be a smart PR move, kind of like what they did with Ryan Paling last day of the season, you know, then set the guy yeah. on a horrible career tra- trajectory after that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. But now he's playing with Sidney Crosby. I think he's probably very content. Oh yeah, he's, and, he's happy now. Yeah, there, he, he definitely is. Okay, we got to talk about this guy. We got to talk about this guy because he just scored the gaming game winning goal for Boston University the other night. He's basically all but won the the Hobie Baker Trophy right now. He's I, I Matt. I said this to a lot of viewers throughout the last several months. Lane Hudson is the most hyped I've been hyped I've been about a prospect since Cole Caulfield, and now Lane Hudson might win the Hobie Baker like Cole Caulfield did. So like there's something there's something here, man. And I I, I got to give a little shout out to Grant McKeg. I know people you know disagree and agree with Craig Craig or Grant McKeg uh, quite a bit, but he heard from an NHL scout today. Grant is a former NHL scout as well with the Habs, and he actually heard Matt that Lane Hudson greater than Adam Fox. That was the projection. Yeah, like that's <clears throat> that's pretty nuts to think about. And I was thinking today, you know, I, I feel like I'm more excited about Lane Hudson than I am about Uri Slavkovsky. Now I know that's that's pretty uh statement. Yeah, that's pretty big, isn't it? I mean, and Hudson can go on and maybe he does nothing in the NHL, but I mean in terms of excitement and, and uh ceiling of Habs players and prospects, Lane Hudson, man, is is just up there for me. I mean, he's grown like a weed too, isn't he? God, he's got to be what, like seven foot four now? <laughs> I think he's taller than Chara. Oh yeah, he's he's getting big, man. He's just <laughs> he's a bruiser all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, he's, he's been... like that one house plant that just won't knock it off. <laughs> yeah, tell my oh my gosh, tell my wife about that. She would uh, understand to the <laughs> to the tree. Hi oh, there you go. Uh, that I that was I I'm horrible. Okay, no, but you know what? For me, being a defenseman and being that Andre Markov was my favorite and still basically my favorite Montreal Canadian of all time. Lane Hudson being the next big thing and the next offensive defenseman for me. I, now that you say it, like I'm kind of more excited about him than Slav too. I mean, I really want Slav to be a beast and to just be the best player in the draft from last year. Um. But I, I got to say, when it comes to the type the type of hockey the Canadians are wanting to play, that offensive, fast style, speed, skill, skill, you know, um, I can't wait for Lane to get here, man. It's going to be uh, it's going to be electric, I think. Yeah, me too. And, and again, like that's not taking away too much from uh, Slavkovsky either. Like I'm still really excited about Slav, but 
Yeah. Hudson, man, just watching the season that he put on is is incredible. Like, holy crap. I, I wasn't expecting him to be doing this well. I, well. I think it's safe to say nobody was really expecting to put up these kind of numbers, but yep. and he, he's matched Brian Leach. Like, yep. unbelievable. 36 games played, 14 goals, 33 assists. That's 47 points in those 36 games. So that's uh, pretty amazing stuff. And you know what? Even in the World Juniors, this was his first World Juniors this year with the States, with the US Team USA. Seven games played, one goal, three assists. And like just the shiftiness on those skates, man. Like I, I coined him as the ankle breaker. That's, he is. That's my nickname for him, man. I can't wait. I can't wait for him to get here. I think he's going to be in the lineup in um 20 like i think he's gonna sign in about a year from now or like maybe he just maybe he just pushes the canadians like cole caulfield to sign him sooner man like is, is it is it out of the realm of possibility to say that he could sign before next season it, it's really up to him and his uh and how he feels about school and everything else i guess but uh he's know. turned 19 so. yeah he's still he's still a pop so yeah but but i tell you i'm really looking forward to him the hebs defense like their defensemen right now their prospect pool is just insane i'd like to see them beef up a bit more with forwards but hopefully now this draft they can take care of some of that because it seems like it's it's pretty loaded up front with forwards yeah that's that's what we need to hit on as a forward i think and that's that's to me where that that's the biggest need for the Canadians at the draft to me is, is it another top top line center if possible, but also it's, it's gotta be forwards for me for sure. I want to jump into really quickly off script here. Um, very, very quickly. Cause it's very, very testy with Habs fans talking about this player. Cause he's not one of our own, but there's, is there any truth do you think to the rumors of, I think, you know, what I'm going to talk about Oh God. Um, to Pete, to Pierre Luc Dubois and, and there's links to him and Logan Mayu. I don't like the sounds of it because I just don't want to lose Logan. I want to see what he is first, and he's had a heck of a season himself. So, what do you th- what do you think about any truth to the rumor that there's interest from the Winnipeg Jets and Logan Mayu for Pierre Luc Dubois? I don't know, man. Like it seems like a bit of a stretch. You know what? Um, I think last so. last draft when <laughs> when Pierre Luc Dubois was at the draft, I know the draft was in Montreal. And he had a he had a pretty easy out on while he was there and while he was there, but. I just got this feeling like, you know, they were, there might have been something going on in the background where he could have possibly become a Montreal Canadian right at the draft, and it didn't happen. I think the the interest is real for him that he that he would like to join the Canadians, but uh, again, I, I'd almost prefer to get him at free agency. But in my heart, I don't think that you know the Jets are going to actually let him lose him for nothing. You know what I mean? As yeah, for the yeah. Logan Mayu rumor. I know it's kind of weird, you know. We're already talking about uh, Drew Ann and how much he struggled in Montreal. I mean, I mean, I think Dubois is a, w- a way better player. Than I think Drew so. Ann. Like, no offense to Drew, way Ann, more intangible, he's bigger size, yeah, like, bigger strength, he hits. He, he's scrappy, he's feisty, he's way different player. Up the points, but I mean, he, he'd be a beauty to have, depending on you know what the actual cost is, and and. There's always risk, I guess, but yeah, but it'd be cool. It'd be cool to add him for sure. I think that if the money was right in free agency, that's when you look at it. I just don't see anything before that. I just don't. And I think that Winnipeg may make him a big offer that will be hard for him to refuse because that might be one of the only ways he stays, but he might want to go where he wants to play. And I hope that is the case. And if that is Montreal, great. If not, great, whatever. But uh, it would be fun to have another power forward centerman maybe like him. And, I, and you know, before like Logan Mayo is having an unbelievable season too, 24 goals, like this is defenseman guys, 24 goals, 27 assists, 51 points in 56 games played for Logan Maya with the London Knights this year. He's got something to prove. He's proved it and he's probably going to continue to prove it. He's 6'3", 208 pounds. So you mentioned being b- big on the back end. I mean, like Arbor Jack guy and Logan Maya on the back end is your future left and right, you know, uh, tough guys and skill guys, maybe even, um, I know Caden Gooley's at the top of that list. Uh, Lane Hudson, maybe too, as well. Um, but like There's you so said, man, many. we're deep. We're pretty deep on defense right now. I think. Yeah, for sure, man. There's, there's so many, and there's a lot of guys that are still chomping at the bit. You got your Jaden Struble, uh, yep. Adam Ingstrom. He's been doing really good. I've been seeing some highlights of him on Twitter, and I mean, a lot of guys are hyping him up quite a bit. And uh, yeah, a lot of these guys are looking good, especially you know the ones that were already up this season. I mean, even Honda Civic. 
Honda Civic <laughs> just came out of nowhere. They get him on realtor.ca, and then all of a sudden he comes in there and he's flying, cruising. Yeah, yeah, he's he's chirping in Matthew's ear. You know, don't touch Nick Suzuki, <laughs> you freaking jerk. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah. he's had himself a good season and he's earned himself potentially a full-time job in the nhl yeah That's what I it think looks so. like to me i think so um i want to finish on dennis Gurionov, matt because uh i've had him much higher in the subject line and then we just went on a tangent with our habs prospects because we're excited about them um again shout out to owen beck who just you know that uh, once again destroyed our niagara ice dogs today i was going to go watch the game again matt but i didn't get a chance to i saw he got one assist at least but uh, yeah. What a beauty Owen is, though. And uh, oh, yeah. another prospect on the forward group we have to look forward to. I love his character. Like, just so happy they picked him. But anyway, Dennis Gurionov. So in just 11 games played, five goals, one assist. Uh, he's a minus five, but who cares? Um, I heard someone say, uh, I think it was Eric McNamara. I don't, I don't really remember exactly what it is that uh, he does other than being a writer and stuff like that. I, I, I just saw him say that, Gurionov could be a replacement for Josh Anderson. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Why don't we just keep them both? I think that we should keep them both. And yeah. it is a beauty, beauty of an assist from Josh Anderson to Gurionov last night. Yes. On his goal. So what do you make of him uh, since he's arrived here, man? Man, he's he's come in here and he's looking really good. Like, uh, I don't miss Evgeny Dad at all. Like, I, I don't. Who? I don't... <laughs> exactly. And he's one no, player that I won't I mean, even remember playing for the Canadians. I mean, what did you used to call him? Oh, Big Daddy enough. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Big Daddy enough. <laughs> I know I put you on the spot. I'm sorry, Matt. You know I love your voice, as does the rest of the world. So, no, he's he's uh, Gary Anov, man, has come in here and he's just scoring a lot of goals, and that's what I like about him. And he's big. He uses his size. He's got that sneaky backhander too that he likes to use. And uh, yes, I'm I'm really hyped about him. I mean, that was a deal where he couldn't go wrong. RFA. What well, twenty five years old, six foot three, six foot four, whatever he is, two hundred and fifty pounds. If he's got a lot of rocks in his pocket, he, <laughs> he looks he looks good. He's doing really well. He skates like the wind, and uh, I hope they continue using him in the top six to give him a real audition kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. And it's clear that they they've been doing that. He's been love, he's been loving playing with Nick Suzuki. Uh, yeah. I think he likes the culture, man. I mean, like Nick Suzuki is captain. Um, all you've heard so far is how welcoming he's been and just been really representing the CH well. And when guys come in, like I think Gurianov really felt like he got a fresh start and you're seeing it, man. He's playing free under Marty St. Louis. It's been fun to watch him so far. I mean, when he gets his chances, like he's got a heck of a shot under him. Oh yeah. He's a beauty. So that with, with that being said, um, I think, uh, they're, I think they're definitely at least so far, like what are your impressions? Are they going to give him his qualifying offer at 2.9 million in the off season? Oh, I think so. I can't see why not at this point. I mean, he's already won my heart, this guy. Like <laughs> I made a Valentine for him. Like he's like, he's doing really well, man. Like uh, just pull the paper out. Just pull it out. You yeah. know. <laughs> just put the paper on the desk. Uh don't take that quite literally. No. <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah. borderline humor's getting a little weird over here, folks. Getting a little weird. Uh <laughs> we're having some fun, as we always do, man. Um, Dennis Gurionov, well, that's kind of where I wanted to uh, wrap up that particular segment, my man. But uh, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up here, man. But as always, uh, super fun to talk with you, man. It's always such a blast. Um, I, I get messages once in a while that we should do this more often, and maybe we will. And hopefully Gary won't get too mad at us and won't feel left out. Maybe we'll have to bring Gary on for a show. Yeah, what do you think, man? Bring him, bring him in, too, I say. we got to bring him in. <laughs> I think we have to. Yeah, I think we have to. Gary, we love you, man. Uh, he's been such an encouragement, too. And uh, as of you, you actually reached out to me first, man, which really impressed me. I I just, that that spoke to your character a lot when you messaged me first. And, you know, I meant to tell you, by the way, a quick funny uh, story about, about yourself and, I guess, me. Um, I've had, yeah. like, two or three people at my hotel that I work at recognize me from my channel. And, I mean, literally, like, two or three. It hasn't been very much. Like, I'm not bragging here, guys. <laughs> and... Uh, I had I went to go fix an issue for a guest in their hotel in their room. Yeah. So I had to go to their room and help them with their TV or whatever. And he's like, Yeah, man, I recognize you, uh, Drew Deeks, you know. And then all of a sudden his girlfriend in the back like didn't hear who I was, but she heard I was a Habs YouTuber and she's like, Oh, are you hockey junkie? <laughs> man. I was wild. like, No, I do know him, and he's my buddy. He's the man. 
<laughs> man that's crazy it's crazy yeah. to think about yeah it was so funny <laughs> I was just like, oh man, that is a huge compliment to you, man. I was like, you know, they know who you are too. And oh, it's great stuff, man. We've we've had a heck of a lot of support. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Like you, you forget that people actually tune into this stuff. It's not just you and me having this back and forth. Um, we've we've had a great time as we always do, Matt. But I hope you guys do have also enjoyed watching us and listening to us. Um, so anyway, man, thanks for doing this, brother. Always appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Anytime I'll always be around. You want to sign us off again? <laughs> sure, man, of course. Okay, guys, and that does it for this episode of Drew Deeks and Friends. We hope you all enjoyed. If you didn't, I hope your cat takes a dump in your shoes. And, uh, <laughs> hey, we'll see you next time. And on that note, thank you guys for watching. You know what buttons to push if you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks.